Welcome to Train Signal. This is the video for Lab 1 of the Building and Active Directory Infrastructure for Ben and Brady's Ice Cream Corp. In this video, we're going to cover several things. We're going to start off first by covering the installation of Active Directory to make sure you're comfortable with all the different steps that go into installing Active Directory. We're going to follow that up by going through a brief overview of DNS and how to install DNS so it works properly with Active Directory. We'll then join Client1 and SRV11 to our domains. We're going to have a member server and we're going to join the client system to the domain as well. From that point forward, we're going to turn SRV11 then into a domain controller. So now we're going to see what it's like to actually have two domain controllers in one domain and we'll test the Active Directory replication between domain controllers. See how to configure that because that a lot of times leads to different problems. Okay, first thing we're going to do, let's take a look at our network diagram. And here we see an overview, and this is the same thing that's in your lab manual, so you can refer to that if you can't see this diagram too well. Let's make it a little bit bigger. Okay, this is the benandbrady.com network. Okay, and this is going to be the DNS name right here that we're going to use, and we'll talk about that a little bit more specifically when we start installing Active Directory. Now, benandbrady.com is an ice cream manufacturer that's located in two different cities in the United States. Okay, San Francisco and then Charlotte, North Carolina. This company, though, you have to realize is still one domain. Okay, so we're still all under this one benandbrady.com domain, and that's represented by the triangle you see here. Okay, very commonly in books, uh, other lab manuals, you're going to see the domain represented as a triangle. Then we have two different locations, San Francisco and Charlotte. In both of these locations, they're going to have separate operations, meaning they have their own servers, Windows 2000 Pro machines. And here you see we're using the software ISIS server, which is Microsoft's firewall product that's protecting the networks from the Internet. Okay, and these two networks are connected together with each other using a VPN connection over the Internet. And that's not really so important to our lab right now, but just to give you some more perspective on how some companies will join themselves together, these two companies then literally, when they want to communicate back and forth with the networks, they're going over the Internet and back down to each of the, each of the different networks. Okay, let's look at the second component of this. And that's going to be our physical setup in Lab 1. Okay, now when we look at this diagram that's once again in the book, we've got our three different systems. SRV1, SRV11, and Client1 are all plugged into the hub, so we're maintaining that same physical connection. And the only thing we really see different here is this Active Directory database. Now, in the first part of this lab, we're going to install Active Directory just on SRV1, so don't be misled by this diagram. Okay, SRV11 is going to be a member server. It's not going to have the Active Directory database. And servers do not automatically get the Active Directory database. Okay, keep this in the back of your head. When you first install Windows 2000 Server, it's considered a standalone server, and there is no Active Directory database on it. That's not put onto the server itself until you run DC Promo and install Active Directory on a specific server. And that's going to be the step we go through next. Okay, so initially, neither one of these have the Active Directory database on them. After the first portion of this lab, SRV1 is going to have Active Directory installed on it, and eventually, by the end of this lab, SRV11 is going to have an Active Directory database installed on it, and these two databases are going to replicate or copy themselves back and forth. And the real notion of what's going on here, this is the original database, and it's created in SRV1 when we first set up the domain. When we add the second domain controller, we're not creating a new database. We're replicating or copying this database over to this area here. Okay, now once that copy has taken place, changes can take place on either one of these databases and the changes will be replicated back and forth to maintain the consistency on these databases. Okay, let's move forward. And we're going to first connect out to SRV1. We're going to connect out to SRV1 using terminal services. And if you look here first, let's make sure that you are aware of what's going on in my particular systems. Now, you may be doing this a different way. Okay, the only thing you really need to do is get to SRV1 in some capacity or another. I'm starting from Client1, and I'm going to use Terminal Services to go out to SRV1. At home, you may have your own network set up with you know, SRV1 connected to its own keyboard, mouse, and monitor. That's fine. However you get to SRV1 is you know, no problem. We just want to connect over there. So I'm going to Terminal Services, and I'm going to go out to SRV1 and log on to this system. 
Okay, so we're sitting at SRV1 now, and the first thing we're going to do is go to Start, Run, and we're going to run the program DC Promo. Okay, Domain Controller Promotion. When we click OK, it's going to start the